I greet you all in your various capacities. I thank the Lawyers Hub and Africa Law Tech Association for extending this invitation to me to speak today. The theme of justice in the legal age is very pertinent considering the times we live in with the COVID-19 pandemic. This conversation, however, also brings hope to us all as justice actors that we will be able to identify the opportunities to adapt and thrive post-COVID-19. As prosecutors, we should brace ourselves because we are going to face challenges on multiple fronts. To add to these pressures, the signs are that some forms of crime, such as online fraud, are actually on the rise. This all points to one clear fact, that whatever situation we find ourselves in, the wheels of justice need to keep turning, or else the old mechanism will come to a grinding halt, which will put the rule of law under severe strain. Few countries, if any, have been prepared to handle the full consequences of this COVID-19 crisis. Understandably, governments are focused on the health response, taking measures such as requiring non-essential workers to work from home to reduce the spread of the virus. Due to the nature of judicial processes, such as in-person participation in proceedings, the formal justice system may not be equipped to effectively function in the context of a shutdown. However, opportunities to innovate and to identify new processes and procedures to modernize justice systems are also increasingly being identified. Uganda was no exception. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, where I am the director, was initially not designated as an essential service provider at the beginning of the COVID-19 lockdown. This was sometime March this year. The office therefore did not ha also receive any budget or resources to run the affairs of the institution and to fight the pandemic. However, considering our mandate and the need to fight crime, our operations continued within the standard operating procedures as per the guidelines issued by government. The ODP strategy was an inclusive process of consultation with all key stakeholders to develop a response plan, including the judiciary, the Uganda police, and the Uganda prisons. This strategy was important because the prosecution cannot work in a vacuum, but is part of the wheels of justice, which includes other players whom I've already mentioned. We are to be speaking the same language in order to move forward, and this is enshrined in the three C's of coordination, communication, and cooperation, and be able to deliver as one. The COVID-19 context has provided an opportunity for the justice sector to examine ways in which the justice system can become more efficient and agile, with long-term impact that can last beyond the crisis period. This will include strengthening information, communication and technology, that is ICT infrastructures, and supporting digitalization of case management and prison population management systems to better identify and manage priority case loads in the short and the long run. As part of its COVID-19 response, planning and preparation, the Office of the DPP developed a strategy for prioritization of critical cases while continuing to protect the rights of victims. Priority cases were cases which involved violence against women and children, child offenders, and the elderly, which were on the rise during the lockdown. Our other strategy has been to provide ICT equipment, software like laptops to staff to enable working remotely from home. The office of the DPP also had to fully utilize its file management computer system, which we call named Procamis, to ensure that files could be read and dispatched remotely. It is hoped that this electronic system can be integrated into one system with other systems of other stakeholders, like the judiciary, the police, the prisons, 
to ensure that even the systems speak to each other. Another way to cope with prosecution of cases during, during this pandemic is sharing of good practices to inform preparation and planning among justice actors on handling of cases in line with international standards. Good practices should be identified and used to inform the development of new protocols and procedures related to the effective functioning of the criminal justice system during the COVID-19. This includes the use of technology, such as e-filing of cases, the legal recognition of electronic evidence or evidence presented by electronic means, and the establishment of electronic case file and evidence management systems across board. But the prosecutors should not lose sight of cases involving victims in remote areas where technology is either scanty or not there at all. There is need to get either mobile courts so that you don't leave anyone behind. The role played by technology during this pandemic cannot be overemphasized. It's without a doubt that technology advancements are the future and the criminal justice system has no choice but to follow suit or else we shall be left behind. The COVID-19 has heightened the need for technology as a means of business continuity during the pandemic and also post-COVID-19. The new normal, as it is now said, is not technology-based. For example, telecommuting or working from home, audiovisual links to and or court cases, Zoom, Microsoft team meetings, to mention but a few. The sector has had some advancements which need to be improved on. One, a number of staff, have been working remotely from home following the directive of our Ministry of Public Service, which requires that we maintain 30% staff levels. And this has been not only a case for Uganda, but also the neighboring countries and globally. A number of office and management meetings are being held online by Zoom, technologies, etc. Many stakeholder engagements and meetings are being held virtually in form of webinars. Use of audiovisual links to and or court sessions, especially bail applications. Although it is still in a few courts, in Uganda it is just in the Kampala courts. And it is also in a few prison facilities. So there is need to roll out to the countryside. A few court of appeal sessions have also been held up country. It is also important that lawyers and their clients be enabled to use technology, including video conferencing facilities, and communicate via telephone and messenger apps to adhere to physical distancing measures. The Uganda judiciary is also implementing their electronic case management information system. Just like the office of the DPP also has the PROCAM, the prosecution case management information system, which is a platform which is really rolled out not in so many stations. Out of almost over 100 stations, we just have only a few, 23 stations. So there's need to roll out more. The office of the DPP also had to think outside the box and quickly create a cybercrime unit, which was not present, because we realized that most of the offenses are now going to be committed online. And Uganda, taking our first uh, elections being online, we had to create this unit, which has become busy ever since then. It handles as well cyber payments, illegal economic transfers or acquisition of funds, terrorist financing, money laundering, to mention but a few. The Office of the DPP is also the in the process of securing laptops for all prosecutors to ensure that they can easily access the prosecution case management system from any part of the country. We have just only slightly more, about 200 desktops, but the office requires 600 to cover all the stations. However, there is need for all stakeholders in the criminal justice system to have management systems linked to one another. There is a need for system integration. This has of course come with challenges. 
lack of laptops, computers, data charges are still exorbitant, upcountry stations are not added to the national grid, poor connectivity during port sessions, lack of training for staff and stakeholders in the use of audiovisual links and Zoom technology, lack of sensitization and counseling for even parties who have little or no previous contact with these emerging technologies. The role of technology in supporting access to justice cannot be underestimated. The future of the legal profession is going to be defined by technology. I thank you all for listening, for God and my country.